Have you watched the movie Hoaxed? You should. You want to know how you get manipulated? Who's doing the manipulating with the media and politicians? Go watch it. And the guy who made it, Mike Cernovich, my friend, he joins us now to talk about culture wars and hoax. And you know what? Actually, let's, let's start right there, Mike, before we get into culture war stuff. Why in an era where I have endless information available to me right here, it's right here in my hand, I can look, I can look up brain surgery and probably there's probably a YouTube video. Why is the public more susceptible to being manipulated than ever when we have more access to information than ever? I think it's less susceptible to information. I, I think that we think that there was a golden era where the news was true and everybody believed the same things, but it was a falsehood. So I'll give you an example. I just watched a movie on I Love Lucy. And if you, if you look back at the ratings on I Love Lucy, I think 50 million people watched that show or how many people watched the, the MASH finale. So back then people trusted Walter Cronkite, right? So I think back then people were just as susceptible to mass delusions and mass psychosis as they are today. And that, this is why I'm an optimist, is this is the first time the past five or 10 years that we've actually been able to push back and help people find the truth. So as bad as people think it is, I think it's better now than it was say 30 years ago or even 20 years ago. Why is it better? Is it is it our trust has been violated too much? Is it because of access to information? I mean, we're certainly not smarter and not more well read. Why is it better? Well, there's alternative voices now that there weren't didn't exist. So imagine, for example, we all know that the Vietnam War was started based on a false flag operation called the Gulf of Tonkin, right? There was no way in the world back then for somebody to say, hey, how do we really know that this thing happened? Fast forward to 2017, where they're saying that America has to go to war in Syria now and do World War III because Assad is gassing children. And people said, well, wait a minute, hold, hold on a second here. We've been down this road before. Let's actually see if this is the case. And they weren't able to draw people into a major war. Now, Ukraine is an interesting case because the, the propaganda for Ukraine is the greatest propaganda campaign I've ever seen in my lifetime. But think about it, Jesse. Think about how you would have prevented World War III because Assad is gassing little children, according to the media. There would be no way for anyone to ask, is this actually happening? Is this actually true? So because of that, people like you and others have, in my view, prevented World War III as of now, but it's still like, it's like the 300 hold the line, you're still getting smashed. So if you're on the front lines, then all you feel is you're getting smashed, right? But you, you look back and you realize, well, we've held the line. They haven't got us in a World War III yet. And how bad have they tried, right? The generals admitted they lied to Trump about where troops were during his presidency. He would say, hey, you need to remove troops. And they would say, okay, we're going to do it. And they would just lie to him about it. They admit it and they all laugh about it now that he's gone. So we are way better off than we were before. When Ukraine was though a different level of propaganda. I've never seen anything like it before in my life because now members of Congress, including you know Republicans have joined in the propaganda campaign and with the ghost of Kiev and other things. Why, why was it so bad around Ukraine? Because I'm one of those people, I'm just kind of ambivalent about the whole thing. My heart really only goes out to the Ukrainian refugees. I, I, I feel bad for them, feel terrible for them to have your home bombed out, relatives died. But honestly, the propaganda campaign was so bad, as you just pointed out, it actually turned me off that I stopped paying attention altogether. I couldn't figure out what was real or not, so I just kind of walked away from the whole thing. But why was it so bad there? Because it was bad. Well, one thing that we've learned is that the the deep state, the regime, they, they don't really understand conservatives. They caricature people, right? That's how... Um, the news, the news hoaxes happen, and you know right away, like, okay, this isn't really what, you know, there are like 50 neo Nazis in America, and this isn't really what they do. They don't go to Stanford University and paint a swastika, right? The 50 neo Nazis are not doing that. So the same is true with the propaganda that the regime creates, trying to make conservatives look bad or trying to frame conservatives. It doesn't come off as believable because they don't actually understand or know who they're dealing with, whereas conservatives understand the liberal mind. So the regime propaganda around Ukraine, though, was what did work was calling people pro-Russia, 
right? So I'll, that worked early on, but then the sting wore off because we have inflation, we have high gas prices, we have real problems in America to focus on. But that was a, a massive propaganda campaign and it was effective initially, but it wore off because we have real problems in our country now. Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History. Che Guevara, the latest episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.